In other words, this is where the thought that you are offering and the, which causes the vibration that you are offering has a rel relationship with the vibration of who you really are. And that juncture is always right now. So in this powerful now, whether you are considering the past, whether you are observing the present or whether you are imagining the future, still it is all happening now. So the rule of thumb that we would follow is whether we are considering the past or observing the now or imagining the future, it would be our intention to be finding the best feeling thought that we could find about whatever subject that we're focused upon. You can literally in your powerful now recreate your past. You can go back to experiences that you've lived before and rethink them and leave them in better feeling places. Because do you know that every experience that you lived through is left right where you last left it vibrationally. And that's what we meant earlier when we said, as you live something and you observe it and you have a knee jerk feeling response to it and you just let yourself feel it without deliberately directing your, your mind you offer a vibration about it and then when you remember it most people go right back to the vibration that was there before and then when they remember it again they go right back to the vibration that was before and that they remembered before until before you know it you have an addiction thought in other words, you have a thought that you've thought so many times that you have established a vibrational pattern so that when you think about that, you will return right to that vibration. And if something comes up occasionally and it is annoying when it comes up, we might take the time to, we would take the time to clean it up, but we would understand why since it only comes up occasionally and there are so many other things in your now that you are giving positive attention to. So this annoying thing that comes up occasionally is not a big player in your vibration. But if there's someone in your life that just annoys the life out of you, if there's some memory that just haunts you that you've been carrying around for a very long time and it's painful when it comes up and it comes up often, we would take that bull by the horns and we would write about it. We would script about it. We would think about it. We would move it up the emotional scale. In fact, in the newest book that we have written, there is a process that we call closing the vibrational gap. And what it is about literally is recognizing in this moment that I'm having an emotion that does not feel good and recognizing that in this moment that I'm feeling this emotion that does not feel good that I am giving my attention to something that I do not want because it is always true as I maintain this not good feeling thought I'm marching 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 toward a manifestation and it will manifest and when I get there I'm not gonna like it if I have a good feeling I'm marching 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 toward a manifestation and when I get there I am gonna like it and you can tell by the way you feel whether you're marching 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 toward something wanted or not so if we were standing in your physical shoes and we had an awareness of negative emotion, we would stop and say, well, I know clearly what I don't want. What is it that I do want? And we would do our best to state it. And you never know more clearly what you do want than when you're having that emotion that reminds you that you don't want it. So we would make the statement, even though the statement would be empty, hollow words, because after all, we've got a thought addiction. We've already practiced this thought. It's come up before. It's a strong thought, but still we're using the the power of our mind right now to at least acknowledge all right this is the most active vibration on this subject I can feel that it is a negative response that I'm having to it I know I don't like it and I know I don't want it and I know that eventually it's going to lead to more that I don't want and so I'm going to take this opportunity to at least make a step in the right direction by saying I know what I don't want what is it that I do want so I've made the statement now I know what I do want now source energy already knew what I wanted and is already over there with it and is already offering a vibration about it but that doesn't help me out all that much because my inner being source energy can't drag me by the hair over there all source energy can do is offer the vibration about it and here I am actively involved here and now I've sort of involved in an act a vibration there so this one's really throbbing this one's just beginning to glitter a little bit for me in other words there I have this vibration going on within me and this is what's dominant it. And now I'm aware that I want to feel better. I don't feel better. I want to feel better, but I don't feel better. I want to feel better, but I don't feel better. I want to feel better, but I don't feel better. Hey, I feel just a little better, just wanting to feel better. And now I acknowledge that I can feel better. I don't feel all that good, but I know I could feel better. And further, I've been listening to Abraham for a while, so I know that is the work. So I say, I'm not going to try to jump over there. That's futile. I can't make that jump any more than I can hear 630 on my radio dial when I'm set at 98 points 
27. In other words, I know I can't make that vibrational jump, but I could move a little. And since I know I want to be there, I think I'll make an effort to move in the right direction. And so now the process that we've written in the book and Esther sits and writes when she comes across something like that is to begin making statements with the effort of just somehow softly, subtly, slightly improving the way I feel. Just a little bit, just sit until I feel just a little bit better. And so she begins to write. And as she writes, at first, she doesn't feel any better at all. In other words, it's just same old, same old. In fact, it's almost aggravating because I'm working on this thing that I want that I don't have. But as she writes, maybe even for only a minute or two, she'll feel a little movement. She'll feel just the slightest bit better. And in the moment that that slight, soft, releasing of the negative emotion the tension of the negative emotion happens esther always smiles and says i've moved it i'm on the right track and almost without exception a feeling of pride or a job well done begins to wash over her and then she says something that we've been teaching all of you for a very long time she says i have moved my point of attraction something that has been in a very strong place for a very long time that I haven't even consciously known was there maybe, I have deliberately moved to a new place. And you know what that means? That means that everything in the universe is now going to respond to her in a slightly different way because of that two minute effort that she made, you see. Now, now she's sort of got a little momentum going. Now she's feeling proud of herself. Now, as she reaches further for something that feels a little better, now it's easier. The next effort is easier. And the next effort is easier. And often, within 10 or 15 minutes, Esther can move herself into a whole new vibration. And in doing so, something that she's been dragging around for years is now vibrationally different. Now, does that mean that it will never come up again? No because other people are out there still living it and she's still out there as you said observing things so there's a very good possibility since there's some activity still present in her vibration that something's going to happen and she's going to see it again but this time when she sees it it won't take her there on the emotional scale it'll take her there in other words it'll be a frustrating experience rather than an angry experience for example and now if she's smart she won't live the rest of her life with it in a vibration of frustration. She'll do the same thing. She'll say, well, I know what I don't want. What is it that I do want? And from this surer place of a more close crack or gap, she will reach for the thought that feels better. And she might bring herself all the way again into a place of feeling better. And usually it happens much quicker. And this time she's feeling good faster and proud of herself for having cleaned it up a little more. And now does that mean it's gone forever? Probably not because people are still out there living it. She's still out there having experiences with people, but eventually she will have cleaned that up so much that when it happens again, instead of feeling frustration or anger or, or discouragement or disempowerment about it, she'll feel mild amusement about it because it won't be threatening her well-being. It's not threatening her freedom. Do you know the only thing that ever really threatens your freedom is something that makes you feel like you're gonna feel bad and you can't control it? That is the only thing, that's the only thing that ever threatens your freedom. It's the feeling that something will happen which will cause a response from you that you will not be able to control. And once you've had a few treks deliberately up this emotional scale, once you've closed that gap on purpose a few times, you begin to feel so invincible that now you're not afraid to go out in the world. And now it doesn't hurt you when you see things that are vibrationally so different from you. And as you see them, while you may have, have a tender heart about them and you may wish that the person wasn't having to live it, it won't drag you into the depths of despair because because you will understand that not only you can create your own reality, but that that one can too. And through the power of your example, perhaps if they want it, and if they can get somewhere in the vibrational vicinity of that which you are about, you could teach them how they can live a constant joyous life also, you see. We love to see you approach subjects. We love to see you get out in the world and observe things that upset your apple cart, so to speak, that give you a sense of emotional upheaval, especially now. Well, we, we, we are not wishing bad experiences for you, but we like you to explore contrast and we like you to conclude again and again, I can clean up my vibration. We were visiting with a woman one day on the telephone. 
years ago when Esther was had time for telephone consultations and she wasn't having any of what we were about we were letting her know that she created her own reality but her own reality was such a mess those were the last words she wanted to hear and so we were trying to distract her from the problems that she had been spewing and we said to her you know because we couldn't get her to hear any positive aspects about anything about her life she was just in a place where nothing was working and so we said sometimes it is good to just withdraw from those subjects altogether and she said well how can I ever learn that I create my own reality when my life is going wrong in so many places and we said by taking some fresh subject of which you have no negative attachment and focusing upon it for just a little while to activate it in your vibration she said what do you mean and we said well just pick some subjects that you're not already worried about and let's talk about them until they are active and then the universe will deliver evidence to you that they are active and it will show you that you do create your own reality and that pleasant things can come to you if you will just focus a little bit she couldn't understand what we were saying she said you choose some things so we said well let's choose the subject of blue glass and she said what and we said well blue glass and she said well why would I want to think about blue glass and we said because you don't usually think about blue glass so it's not one of the things that you've messed up in your life and so she said well what about blue glass and we said well there are a lot of different colors of blue aren't there and she said I suppose and we said and there are different densities some of them you can see through some of them are opaque and you cannot and they're used in all different kinds of things she said I guess and we said well let's talk about something else let's talk about uh, butterflies and she said all right and we said they come in all sizes don't they and she said I suppose and he said and they are in all different colors and some of them are very large and and beautiful some of them you can even see right through she said I suppose and we held her attention for a little while making an effort to activate something in her vibration and then we said well let's talk about something else and she said like what and we said like a feather and she said all right and we talked about feathers we talked about them on birds and off of birds and different sizes and different things and and now she'd had about all of us that she could stand and she hung up and ask for her money back <laughs> and Jerry and Esther were in California they were in La Jolla and they went to George's for lunch and they parked their car and as they got out of the car and Esther Jerry had not heard the conversation and Esther was not thinking about it at all and they got out of the car and Esther said let's go in this shop and Jerry said I thought we were going to lunch and Esther said we are but let's go in this shop and Jerry said well I thought we were going to lunch and Esther said I really want to go in this shop and so Esther is just burying herself in this shop going back 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 and Jerry is following her wondering if she has lost her mind and she gets back to the back wall of this shop and there was the most incredible display of blue glass that Esther has ever seen and Esther did not make the association she just said this is amazing and Jerry said do you want to buy any of it and Esther said no I just think it's beautiful and then they went on to George's and had a wonderful lunch and a few minutes later they left George's and they walked down to the cove it's the most beautiful place where the land meets the sea Jerry and Esther loved to go down to these rocks and to this beautiful water and as they were walking down across the lawn on their way to the cove a flurry of butterflies surrounded them that was so intense they had to deliberately close their mouth to keep from eating them and Esther still is not making any association with the conversation that we've had and they are moving through the butterflies and as the butterflies begin to clear a little boy about who looked to be about four years old a little oriental boy came running across the lawn to Esther it was as if he knew her and Esther's squinting to see why he is coming to her and he has something in his hand and as he comes to her he hands her a feather that he has picked up off the lawn and in that moment goosebumps moved through Esther as she realized that there had been an activation of these subjects we'd stayed upon them long enough and they would remained active enough in Esther's vibration that within less than two hours of the activation the universe had managed to bring them fully in full manifestational format